Mark Raymundi back with you for ESPN here with UFC, sometimes middleweight, sometimes welterweight, Kevin Holland. Uh, Kevin, I, I wanted to ask you really quick. Uh, I know that you're, uh, that you're in a hurry today, but something happened on, on Monday night. You were at a, a restaurant in Houston, Texas. You were down there training with coach uh, Bob Perez. Uh, what, what happened exactly? I know the police were involved. Can you please tell me about what happened? Yeah, actually, my little brother was getting in some work with Bob. That's why he's in the back snoring like Snorlax. Uh, yeah, we were out here just, you know, having a good old time. We're out at the sushi bar. Me and my, I keep saying my friend, but it was actually my uncle. Me and my, I call him baby uncle because he's a year younger than me. Uh, we were out there. We're eating some sushi, chilling, having a good time. You know, he was just being in some extra company for me. And then, um, you know, I was facing one way and then we heard a big loud bang. I thought it was champagne bottle popping, you know, because it was people behind us. It was either having a birthday party. And uh, I go to look around. You see people running like they had, like, uh, the look of death on their face, you know, just super worried. And so, you know, I'm like, all right, well, we know what this is. So get a little low, you know, uh, check the corner. I see the gun. The guy, he grabbed the guy, but the, the gun's facing right towards where we are. So I'm like, I'm going to make a move this way, you know what I mean, get around this so I don't have to worry about it. So I go around the other side. I come up behind the guy. I grab a chair. I was going to smack him with a chair. But when you get to the other side, you can't really see who the shooter is, whether it's uh, the guy on top or the guy on bottom exactly. But I noticed the guy on top was mainly holding the guy's hand to try and get him to stop squeezing the trigger. So then, you know, we ply the gun out of that guy's hand. I go ahead. I pull him into my uh, into my lap, put the hooks in, hit him with a rear naked choke. My uh, baby uncle's sitting there. He's looking at me. You know, he's, he's Herb Dean with the dreads hanging out the back. You know what I mean? Skinny Herb, that's what I call him right there at that moment. And he's like, uh, he's not asleep. He's not asleep. All right, he's asleep. So as soon as he was asleep, you know, I let go of the choke, slid out on top, got full mount, stretched the arms out so he couldn't reach for anything. We grabbed his backpack, threw his backpack off to the side, made sure the gun was out of play, made sure he couldn't reach for anything, held his head so he couldn't bite me. And, you know, a few minutes later, I mean, I ain't never saw the police pull up that fast, so good job used to be they got there pretty quick, you know, handcuffed the guy and, you know, it was the wrap, you know, can kind of say everybody was blessed. Nobody got hurt, you know, not even the shooter. So good night. What, why you was know, that bad night. Uh, your, your instinct? And I asked that because, you know, a lot of people in that situation, you know, they're ducking for cover, they're running away, they're hiding behind something. You kind of, you put yourself into the mix. Why was that? It just, honestly, it seemed like the safer route, you know what I mean? To go to it instead of going away from it. You know, I started off in Kung Fu before I ever did any type of martial arts, you know, and uh, self-defense first. And it's funny because my baby uncle, you know, we, you know, we lived together. I was raised with my grandparents. So, you know, me and him in the same house when I started doing Kung Fu and stuff. So he used to kind of do the Kung Fu with me back in the day. So it was our instinct just to go to it instead of going away from it. You know what I mean? Uh, back in the day, he used to always say, you know, if, if it's a knife, you run. If it's a gun, you go to. So, you know, it was a gun. We went to instead of going away. You know, just a safer option. It worked out smooth. I wouldn't tell the next person to do it unless they're, you know, seriously trained for that type of situation. But I mean, besides, you know, just doing cage fighting, it's like I train self-defense first and foremost. So, that, I mean, that was to me, that was the proper way to defend myself at the moment. So uh, that's where I went. Plus, I like that, man. You know, so. Uh, so I, I actually I reached out to the Houston uh, PD about this. And this is what they said. And help, help help me see if I can match this up with, you know, what you what you saw firsthand. They told me that. At about 11.30 p.m. Monday night, there was a suspect who fired a gun into the air inside the restaurant. Uh, after he fired the gun, a man who was sitting near him grabbed his hand and pointed the gun away and then subdued the suspect until officers, officers arrived. Does that line up a little bit uh, about what you saw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly how it went. You know, the guy grabbed the, the guy shot, the guy grabs him, but they were on the ground. You know, we were running that way. They're, they're on the ground. You know, he's probably feels like he has the gun in a good situation the gun's not pointed towards him the gun's not pointed towards his wife but everybody in the back of the room you know including where i'm sitting at the gun's pointed straight towards us you know what i mean so if the guy squeezes one more time you know whoever's behind you is getting hit you know you get in a situation where a guy has a gun it needs to be going face up or it needs to be facing down you can't point it in the opposite direction thinking that it's safe and if you're upstairs in a building you shouldn't have the gun facing down you should have the gun facing up if you're downstairs in a building you should have the gun facing down you should have the gun facing up I mean, I'm not going to say it's common sense, but you know, like I said, you know what I mean? A lot of time doing martial arts, you know, Kung Fu, we believe in doing, going over the weapons training and stuff like that. So, I mean, the guy did a great job for protecting him and his old lady. But as far as everybody else in the building was concerned, we could have got popped at any time. So, 
you know, props to him for stepping up and grabbing the guy. I mean, but, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? Props to him, bro. Props to him. You know at, I mean? at any point, uh, at any point when this was going on, was there was there any kind of fear like that this gun goes off one more time? It, it's into the crowd. It's into the customers. I mean, that's not, that sounds like a very uh, tense situation. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, the, the, the situation is more intense because the people that are there, you know, like the way everybody's reacting to the situation and stuff like that, you know, just trying to get to the man alone is already a, is a hassle. You know what I mean? Cause you got people running there. They're running for their lives. You know, that's a, that's how stampedes happen. So I'm glad it wasn't, you know, a hundred to 200 people inside the room. Cause then getting over there would have been a lot harder, you know? Uh, but uh, no, I mean, yeah, it's a hostile situation, but I mean, anytime there's a weapon involved, it's, it's always going to be a hostile situation. Anytime there's more than two people involved, it's a super hostile situation. Cause you know, feelings get involved. People start acting crazy. And this is not the first time that you've been involved with something similar to this. A few months ago, you apprehended uh, an alleged robber, an alleged thief, right? Did you not? Yeah, the guy had jacked the car, but that was in the neighborhood. You know, I just seen the guy driving off in a stolen car. The guy was chasing him. I chased, you know what I mean? I go behind him. I was in my charger at the time. So I, I just was looking at a good good time to speed with my charger without getting in trouble. So, I mean, that's how that kind of went. You know? Well, how do, you, how do you think you end up in these in these situations? Honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea. I would, I would like to end up in less situations, to be honest with you. I was just, I was actually just talking to my people about that not too long ago. I was like, bro, I'm always in some BS. You know what I mean? So, yeah. It's just uh, so interesting, man. You're like, you're like one of the most fascinating guys on the UFC roster. You're out here, you know, apprehending alleged criminals. You're, you're beating up online trolls, which we've talked about in the past. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're becoming a meme when you're in a, you're in an almost choke by, Alex Cowboy Oliveira back at UFC 272 a few weeks ago in Las Vegas. I mean, I feel like every time I open up uh, Twitter, Kevin Holland is doing something. You, yeah. I'm honestly just living the same life I was living before I got to the UFC. It's just now that I got a little name behind me with a blue check, you know, they make everything a bigger deal. So, you know, yeah, it's just, just living life how I normally would, you know, trying to keep my head low and, and you know, and keep my ass clear, you know, so, uh, I just seem to always keep my head in the wrong spot and my ass in the wrong spot with it. <laughs> Last thing, any, any advice if someone else was in that situation, you'd probably tell them not to actually do what, what you ended up doing, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys get up in a situation like that. Every, I understand everybody always wants to run, but how about you guys get low first and, and try not to run each other over? Because when you guys run into each other, it hurts, bro. You know, don't kill each other in the stampede. Don't try this at home. Only only Kevin Holland can can do these uh, these feats. Yeah, don't don't try it at home. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much, man. Uh, congrats on the win a few weeks ago. I saw I saw you in Vegas, and uh, looking forward to seeing you back in there soon. At 170 pounds, right? 170. 170 pounds. Uh, if they, they better book me soon, because I've been eating carne asada fries, and I don't want the weight cut to be too difficult. So, yeah, 170 pounds would be nice. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Uh, please be careful. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.